over the past year and a half, I've seen a lot of people have troubles using Blender to export animations to Unreal Engine 4. And while it has been a struggle of trying to use tools and certain settings and so on and so forth, in the last little bit, Blender and Epic Games together in their new versions have maybe accidentally created the ability to make it actually very easy. And I still see questions pop up all the time. I cannot get my animations to export to Unreal Engine 4. So I'm gonna quickly show you how to do that. My example here is I had this make human character with a make human rig that I animated and then I simply was able to bring it into Unreal Engine 4 and it plays just fine. How do we do that? Let's begin in Blender. Let's start a new file. I'm on completely stock settings other than a few personal preferences. I'm going to get rid of the camera and the lamp. We don't want them in our scene. First thing we're going to do, a very important step, is go to your scene settings, change it to metric, and the scale is 0.01, so that we're working in centimeters. That's the Unreal Engine 4 scale. Now you notice your grid floor disappears, and your meshes will too. So to change that, under view, just change the clipping end to something. I like to choose like 500 meters or 1 kilometer is the max. So. And you should never you should never have anything clip in that size anyways let's just add a stock cube so mesh cube i'm gonna grab along the z one unit sorry one meter so to do that since we're working in centimeters now i'm gonna go grab z then hit the equal sign this will allow you to type in a custom size i'm gonna type in one m for one meter that'll put it right on the grid floor then with my cursor at the center, if it's not already at the center, just hit Shift S, cursor to center. I'm going to hit Control, turn on screencast keys, that might help. Control Alt Shift C, that's to set your origin, origin to 3D cursor. I believe it's also in the T panel somewhere. Yeah, set origin right there. If you have dynamic spacebar on, it's also in the spacebar menu. Anyway, so with the origin on the floor like that, what I'm going to now go do is hit Shift A. I'm going to add in an armature, single bone. I'm going to go into wireframe mode so I can see it. You can use x-ray too, whatever works. I'm going to expand my armature. I'm going to expand the armature again. And the very first bone you want to call root. Unreal Engine 4 is going to look for a root bone. Now this root bone is what's going to basic it's not gonna affect anything or it's 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 gonna carry the entire mesh with it it's basically gonna be skin to every single vert except it won't deform anything so all of your bone hierarchy will be built off of the root bone so for example I go into edit mode take the head and maybe I'll extrude one along the Y do it again along the negative y so you might call those something like say left arm right arm and then off those you might have some more hierarchy like so so as long as your root bones always at 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 the, at the start and all the hierarchy is built upon that then you're good to go so now we just simply need to set up we need to we need to skin our rig to our mesh now just to save time i'm going to do it the easy way i'm just going to select my mesh then my armature i'm going to go control p and use automatic weights and then you could of course always select your mesh and weight paint to do it the way you wanted but since i'm just doing this quickly i'm not going to of course you could always you could always use um empty groups and set up uh, vertex groups on your own but that's a blender lesson more so anyways so now if we select a bone and go into pose mode it deforms our mesh so that is set up perfectly so what we need to do now is make sure our scale rotation location of everything is correct so scroll up on your end panel to the very top under transform select your mesh make sure everything's at zero and the scale set to one 
and your armature as well you want the scale to be one and as long as that's set you are good to go so now that that's set up all we have to do is export first our our mesh and armature and then our animation so we don't have any animations yet on this otherwise it will ruin the process so we're going to go file export fpx now this is where a lot of people get confused they try different things and for static meshes i do have custom settings you can see here but for doing skeletal stuff and animations i've found that just hitting restore default and then just choosing armature and mesh works perfectly fine the stock settings just seem to work so we're just going to call this our cube scale .fbx. I'm going to export that. We're going to hop into uh, Unreal Engine. I'm going to take that FBX file and I'm going to drag it into Unreal Engine 4. And again, just using the stock settings, you're, you're perfectly good. However, we don't want to import any animations because there are no animations yet. Everything else is fine the way it is. Don't change the scale since we already set a few centimeters. However, you do want to set use frame zero as reference pose. That's a very important setting. Some people say they can get stuff to work without it. I find I can't. And you want to import the mesh. You want to import as a skeletal mesh. You don't want to select a skeleton though so that it will create one. Same with physics asset. It'll create one for you here. So stock settings just like that. Perfectly fine. We'll hit import. It's going to give us some errors because I didn't UV unwrap it. And the typical smoothing options you have when it's just the way Blender is. Anyways, those are just warnings. They're perfectly fine. We now have our skeletal mesh cube guy. And you can see if we go to the skeleton, it creates our skeleton. Now, it does create leaf bones. That's part of the stock settings. Now, this did import at 100x. So, you would want to import it at decimal 01 to get true life size. But just for example purposes, I keep it at 1 so that there's no room for errors. Anyways, if we select a bone, you'll see that it is indeed skinned and working. Anyways, on to an actual animation. And again, the, the ends are the leaf bones that the stock options add. I haven't found an issue with it, unless you're trying to duplicate the, one of the stock skeletons. It's not really an issue, it just adds extra bones is all. Anyways, so now we need an animation. So we'll hop right back into Blender. And we'll make a quick animation. So we'll just open up the timeline on frame one. I'm gonna go into wireframe mode again. I'm gonna take just one of these random bones. I'm gonna say take this right arm dot zero zero one. I insert a keyframe on frame one by going into pose mode. It's control tab, hitting I, a lock rot scale, or whatever works for you. Then I'm going to rotate it randomly a little bit, not too much so that we know it's not going crazy, but just enough that we know it's working. Sorry, I'm going to go to frame 20 first and do that. I'm gonna insert another lock rot scale. I'm going to go to my scene, sorry, not my scene settings, it's my render settings. And I'm going to set the frame start frame as 1 and the end frame as 20. And if you go to the dope sheet, you can always verify that it's set up properly. So we are good to go. So hop back to frame one. Now what we need to do is re-export it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go file, export, FBX. And this time we just want to export the armature. Otherwise, same settings, completely stock. And we'll just call it R cube scale underscore anim1. We'll export it. Hop back into the editor. I'm going to drag that file in. Now it recognizes that it's an animation. So we've got animation here. However, we need to choose a skeleton. We want to choose a skeleton we just created, which was um, our cube, I believe. Yeah, our cube skeleton. 
And so just like that, stock settings, you want it at the same scale that you imported your skeleton at. So if you had imported it to real life size at 0 0.01, then you'd want to do the same for your animations. But since I imported at 1, I'm going to leave this one at 1 as well. Otherwise, it'll throw ears. I'm going to hit import. And it says the bone transform is different. I haven't tracked down exactly why it gives that error. Again, Blender just isn't 100% compatible. But now we have an animation sequence that we just created. And if we open it, it plays just like we created. So that's really all there is to it. Now what's interesting is you'll notice this animation has a size that's properly sized, whereas our skeletal mesh is 10 times or 100 times sorry larger so just something to be aware of anyways that's how i do it that's how i've started doing all my animations and i was using maya before and i don't I, I don't use maya for modeling i use blender so now that i'm able to do my animations in blender instead of maya that makes my life much easier i just wanted to share this process with everyone so anyways, hopefully you can have some animation set up for your game. And that will be all for this little tutorial. So anyways, thanks again for watching from the team here at Unreal Tech, a division of BlenderTech.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, consider liking it. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. We're on social media on the links on your screen. If you dislike this video for some reason, please tell us why so we can continually improve our videos based on your community input. We also take requests, so we'll see you next time. And remember, create your way.